Okay, um, we've got the rear suspension and all its bits and pieces with a brake type a brake disc up on the bench. Um, it's all loosely put together, so I just, I'm just doing that so you can see. So, how to remove the brake disc when, when, when it's on the car? The first thing you have to do is remove this caliper. Now, um, I'm going to go through that in a minute, but the first thing you need to do is remove this pin, which is holding the, going through the brake pads, which is very easy. You simply need to get, if you come around this side of the brake caliper, if you can see right here, here there's a little hole where the pin sits into. Yep. So basically you simply want a little pin or nail or something that you put into that hole and you tap this pin out. So I'm going to see if I can find, I should have had one of these prepared really, shouldn't I? Um, I'll just put this little thing in here, the little screwdriver that I use for. So that goes in there and then I can try and tap it out because it's not in tight. You can see it's coming out from the other side. If I tap, yep, and then that can pull out. Um, so this is the side, cause it's all loose. You would have to tap it out all the way. It's unlikely you'd be able to take it out with a pair of pliers, but let's see. It's unlikely. I'm going to be able to take it out with a pair of pliers now as well. Okay, so let's see. There you go. So the pin came out. Now have a look here at the back of the caliper, there is a spring. This pin when it goes through, it goes through the two brake pad ends and goes through this spring as well. So when you take this out, make sure the spring doesn't fly out um, as it would do the way I just did it. So you take that out, that's that done. Then you go to the back of the caliper with your 17mm socket and you undo the bolt that's holding the caliper at the back. Here, so I've got it loose, so I'm going to undo that. Okay, so we wouldn't actually do that, but anyway. And then my pads have fallen out, that's how easy it is to get the pads out. So you will undo this, and then this will prise out. So you can get a screwdriver into the here, and you just prise it off the uh, pin. Now, before you do that, make sure you don't make this mistake. When you remove the bolt, the retaining bolt holding the caliper, to the um, hub carrier, make sure you pull the slider back. Pull it back, and then take it out. The reason is this slider, if you have a look, this slider here actually sits in here. So it, when it sits in, I'll push it back in again. When it sits in here, it's, it's locked in there. So if you try and pull back, you're actually trying to break the slider. So you need to pull the slider back so that you have a gap, you can see a gap between the slider and the carrier, and then you can pull it off. Okay, once you've pulled that off, okay, I'm just going to, you can then remove the disc. You want to come back down here? You can then, so you'll pull, you'll pull the, the caliper off, the caliper was, is still on a, on a bottom slider. You can take the brake pads out quite easily, like so, and this, will be sitting like and then you can remove this the brake disc uh, retaining bolt which I'm having to remove now and out comes the brake disc okay I'm just going to put that on the floor and I'm going to reassemble the caliper right the pads, as you can see, are here. The pads simply sit. If you have a look here, the pads simply sit on the caliper, like so. Just as simple as that. They have a little spring on them here. Make sure the spring is sitting inside this lip, not open like that. Actually, I think that is the right way. The spring is outside there. Sorry, that's how it should sit. So I think that adds a bit of force to stop it from rattling around inside there. You don't want it like this. Yeah, you want it basically like so. So that acts, acts as a spring this way. And it will sit in there. Okay, and you have two of them. Now when you want to remove the pads and caliper, the piston inside this Brembo caliper doesn't compress by itself. It has to be twisted. 
So when the pads are are on the um, on the car, I'll just put them. Just try and get back on again. That's that one. Get that spring in the right way. So when the caliper is on the car, like so, there will be a little give in the piston. So you can get your screwdriver in and maybe try and push that piston in a little bit because you need to get some play so you can prise it off. If you've got lippage on your disc, that's going to make your life a little bit more miserable. Um, but it will come off. And then you simply can take your, your pads out as you see them clip in. And they can clip out uh, easily too. And then what you would do to get this piston going in and out, a lot of people want a special tool. You don't necessarily have to get a special tool. If you have some circuit pliers like this, I find it better to wear some gloves because sometimes, or some thick gloves even, because sometimes when you want to exert force on this, it actually hurts your hands if you're a wimp like me. But basically, you put your pliers in there, hold them, push in and turn. I've already done it on this one, but I'll just show you, look, you can turn it, yeah? If you turn it the other way, it comes out. So I'll show you that. See it coming out? It comes out. So basically, when you want to change your pads, the, the, the piston will probably be somewhere there. So you want to put your circlip pliers in there. Push in and turn. So I find if you've got some gloves, even these gloves are not good enough, maybe some thicker gloves, then you can apply more force. Otherwise, you find yourself um, causing pain in your fingers and in your hands. But if you hold this tight... I hold it like that, so I can get some good grip. But you're not trying to grip it and close the pliers. You're trying to push in and turn. So you push in and turn. And basically, that's how it works. Now, and it will go all the way in. Now, some people, when they do this, and I actually think this is maybe a good, a good uh, thing to do, is they will... Look, here's your bleeding nipple. So what they will do before they start compressing a piston in the brake caliper, bleeding nipple, get uh, a tube, put it over the bleeding nipple, and before you start compressing, slacken off this bleeding nipple. Yeah? So I don't know what size it is, I can tell you now, just have some spanners and have a look which one, I think it might be 11 or 12. Yes, yeah, it's, it's an 11. Yeah, I've already loosened mine anyway. So you slacken off the bleeding nipple, then when you, when you push in the piston, compress the piston by turning it, the fluid in it will not act as a, um, as a resistance and will just simply come up the tube. The reason I say use a tube, because one, you don't want fluid all over the place, but two, when you do it and you finish, you close it, you can see if there's any air got into it. There shouldn't be, because if no one's pushing the piston back, nothing's pushing the piston back, you're just pushing it back in. Once you've pushed it back in, no air would have come, just, you would just get fluid going up your pipe, up to a certain amount. It won't come out the other end because there's a vacuum, there's nothing allowing it to come out. And then you tighten your bleeding nipple back, tighten it, and then you can remove it. Fine. And then you put your new pads in. If you think you need more fluid, you can top up the fluid and the reservoir end. That tends to be a good way of doing it. Also, some people complain that when the, if you don't do it this way, you might put pressure back onto at the servo end and you might... Um, make the diaphragm in the servo turn the other way around and get lots of other problems. So if you do it this way, you're not putting any pressure back at the other end. Right, so now to remove the caliper, as I said, we've removed the retaining nut, bolt, we pull the slider back, pull the caliper out, and now you can see there's another slider here. Can you see that? Yep. This slider you can see, you can see my finger from there? Yep. And then you can just pull this out. So that slider is part of the hub carrier, and now you've got your brake caliper off. Okay, I'm going to put the brake caliper away, and we'll look at the rest of this. So now the next thing, when you want to, so this, you've taken your caliper off, you can take off your castle nut, which will be sitting in there, which is connected to the drive shaft with a pin, a split pin, which will be on there. So you undo the split pin, take the split pin out, which goes through the drive shaft, take that out, and then you've got to undo this castle nut. can be a pain. You need a good, this is a 30 millimeter socket. So that fits on the top of the castle nut. This is a three quarter inch bar. Seriously, you need a good bar. 
<laughs> I borrowed this from somebody who fixes tractors and things. And then I had another bar extension on there. I put that on here and I applied force. And that's simple as that. You apply the force down and this will undo. I have had someone tell me that they had could they use a scaffold pole and it still didn't come undone. That's uh, pretty serious. Uh, but normally, yeah, you apply if you have a good bar and you apply the bar on it. Um, so I borrowed this. This is a three quarter inch because the amount of force I don't want this breaking. So three quarter inch, very good socket, a good strong bar, and then another piece to extend it. And that was actually quite easy to take off. And bearing in mind the amount of problems I've had with bolts and things on this car. Um, I got it off that way, so that was that was okay. So you've got that off. Then you want to remove the um, uh, you want to remove the wishbones. So I showed you already how you would take the bolts off and slide them out. If they don't slide out, you have to cut through. So I've removed the two wishbones. You want to remove the your your suspension spring, which is very easy. You just take the nut off one side, the bolt slides out. You'll take the nut off the other side. If you have a look down here, right, let me just lift this up now. You can see where this fits in. It's in underneath here. So I'm just going to put that aside. And hopefully the camera can see underneath here. So that's where your nuts, the bolts slide through. The bottom part of your shock absorber, damper should I say, fits in there. Bolt goes through, nut and bolt. Remove that and it comes out. Okay, so we removed our shocks, these are Gaz Gold Pro, some people like them, some people don't. Um, I've actually taken this apart, cleaned it up, I've put protective wax onto the, um, onto the spring and that's going to go back onto the car later on. Let me just put that back on my bench over here. Right, now let's have a look at the um, track rod. 